Imagine being able to play on a music instrument 100% accurately a complex musical piece you have just heard. Or being able to paint like an experienced realist painter from memory, an image you saw years ago. Though rare, some people can do just that and much, much more. These superhumans are also known as savants. Although some of their work can leave you breathless, scientists still debate whether their creative abilities match their amazing artistic skills. Welcome to another episode of New Creative You Podcast. My name is Peja, I am a creative professional and the host of this show. Today I will share with you personal stories of people with extraordinary artistic skills which come at a high price. Enjoy the story about savantism, the curse of the creative genius. Savants are people with developmental disabilities, brain disorder or disease who possess specific cognitive skills that are in stark contrast with their overall limitations. These are usually single skills that are related to music, art, calendar calculating, mathematics or mechanical or visual spatial skills, and they are spectacular compared to the capabilities of an average person. Savant syndrome affects male four to six times more than females. It is always related to autism. 10% of autistic patients have some form of savantism expressed to a certain extent, and in very rare cases, people with mental retardation. In these cases, the condition is present from birth and can be detected in early childhood. But there is another group of savants, acquired savants, whose condition can be the result of a head injury or a disease, like meningitis, stroke, dementia, for example. Born savants usually suffer from an autistic spectrum disorder, which means that they face difficulties with social communication and interaction, and they may exhibit restricted repetitive patterns of behavior, interests or activities. They also suffer from Asperger's syndrome, which is a mild form of autism, or intellectual disability, meaning that their IQ is between 50 and 70. Acquired savants may suffer different problems caused by brain injury, uh, severe migraine, loss of particular abilities, etc. Or they can return to normal life, blessed with a newly acquired superpower. How do these superpowers come to existence? 
When a brain suffers a damage in one area, a healthy brain area is recruited to take over its tasks. New brain connections are created and a hidden capacity of a newly recruited area is brought to light. Savants can play music without even learning a note, paint or model a sculpture without taking art lessons, speak foreign languages they never learned, calculate in a second the day of the week in a calendar or do complex equations better than any computer. Acquired savants develop these special skills virtually overnight and they become aware of it soon after they recover from their injury. It is a great mystery how these people can know things no one ever thought them. Is there a hidden knowledge inside of all of us? Is it a form of genetic memory that we are all born with but cannot gain access to? Another thing that intrigues scientists is how creative are the savants with artistic skills. In a study that took place in 1987, scientists Hermelin, O'Connor and Lee compared five musical savants with five exceptionally talented non-savant children. The savant children who had a mean IQ of 59, in other words, they were considered mentally retarded, were absolutely superior in the test in musical inventiveness and musical competence that included timing, balance and complexity. This research raises the question of how reliable are IQ measurements and whether there are different forms of intelligence, musical intelligence in this case, that coexist in the human mind. Since special abilities of savants are restricted to areas that seem to require extreme focus and memory skills, scientists believe that the skills that these individuals exhibit are performance and reproduction and not original creation and interpretation. During the last decades, scientists have been observing people with this syndrome and tracked the development of their creative skills over time. In the beginning, savants go through replication and imitation phase, using their skills to make accurate renderings of images they see or interpretation of music they hear. After a certain time, savants begin to introduce slight modulations in their work which slowly transforms into improvisation. Finally, some savants manage to reach the phase when they start to display originality in their work. Imitators evolve into creators. It is estimated that there are less than a hundred savants currently living. If you are wondering whether there is a safe way to become one of them without giving yourself a knockdown, the answer is yes, but no. Savant syndrome has been artificially replicated using transcranial magnetic stimulation device, a magnet that stimulates a lesion and induces temporary special skills. I emphasize temporary. I must admit that I have not found any genius with savant syndrome in all the books about the history of art or engineering that I have read. Michelangelo, Da Vinci, Van Gogh, Tesla, they all had mental struggles, yet none of them could be considered a savant. Still, I cannot but be amazed by this peculiar mental phenomenon, so I'm going to introduce you to some contemporary savants. If their stories seem interesting enough, you can find more information about them in this episode's show notes and judge for yourself the uniqueness of their work. John Sarkin, for example, is an acquired savant and a self-taught artist. In his early life, he was a chiropractician. At the age of 35, he underwent a brain operation and soon after he suffered from a stroke which left him deaf in one ear, uh, his vision splintered and and his balance permanently skewed. Soon, Sarkin became obsessed with drawing. Influenced by comics and popular culture, his drawings and paintings became filled with distorted cartoon faces and symbols. 
Alonso Clemons is another acquired savant and an animal sculptor. Clemons, who lives in Colorado, suffered a severe brain injury as a child, which left him with a developmental disability, uh, with an IQ in the 40 to 50 range. Clemons began sculpting in school and is now considered a top sculptor. He creates incredibly realistic sculptures of animals, uh, mostly horses, antelopes and bulls, after seeing an image of one for only a few seconds. In 1986, he had a premiere exhibition in Aspen, Colorado. Stephen Wiltshire is a British architectural artist and autistic savant. He was born in London, England in 1974. Wiltshire was mute when young. At the age of three, he was diagnosed with autism. When he was about seven, Wiltshire became fascinated with sketching landmark London buildings. Wiltshire can look at a subject once and then draw an accurate and detailed picture of it. He is internationally famous for his drawings of cityscapes. He takes a short helicopter ride above the city, then retreats to his studio to draw several meters long accurate depiction of the city entirely from his memory. So far, Stephen has made cityscapes of Tokyo, Rome, Hong Kong, Frankfurt, Madrid, Dubai, Jerusalem and London. In 2006, Wiltshire was appointed a member of the Order of the British Empire for Services to Art. Matthew Matt Savage is an American autistic savant musician, born in Sudbury, Massachusetts in 1992. Savage was an infant who walked early and learned to read by the age of 18 months. He was diagnosed with autism at age 3. He did not like any noises or music during his early childhood. At age 6, Savage taught himself to read piano music. He studied classical piano for less than a year before discovering jazz, which became his main focus. Today, Savage is an accomplished musician and composer. Anthony Sicoria is a doctor specializing in orthopedic medicine and uh, acquired musical savant. In 1994, when Tony Sicoria was 42 years old, he was struck by lightning near Albany, New York, while standing next to a public telephone. Sicuria suffered burns to his face and left foot where the electrical charge had entered and exited his body. Very soon, Sicuria became struck with an insatiable desire to listen to piano music. He acquired a piano and started to teach himself to play. Although before his accident he had had no particular interest in music, within three months of being struck by lightning, Sicuria spent nearly all his time playing and composing. He debuted his first piano composition in 2007. Daniel Tamet, an essayist, novelist, poet, translator and autistic savant, was born in 1979 in England. His 2006 memoir, Born on a Blue Day, about his life with Asperger syndrome and savant syndrome, was named Best Book for Young Adults in 2008. Since then, he wrote another three best-selling books. His books have been published in over 20 languages. He was elected in 2012 to serve as a Fellow of the Royal Society of Arts. Thank you for joining me in today's show. If you liked this episode, you would do me a great favor if you liked, commented and shared it with your creative friends. You can also visit my blog at newcreativeview.com and discover some interesting topics there. There you will also find links to my social media profiles so you can follow me and stay up to date with what is going on with the New Creative View project. You can also subscribe to my mailing list, the link is in the description, to get access to New Creative View's secret page where you can download free ebooks and other digital material that will keep your brain active and creative. 
I have one final request for you. Please, please, stay healthy and creative.